Good morning, Memorial Park Elementary parents and students, and welcome to our online orientation video. Parents, we typically uh, begin the school year by doing an in-person orientation at each school, and this year, uh, due to COVID-19, that's going to look a little different for us. Uh, typically, at our orientation, uh, our parents and students would all meet in the gym, and when we make our way to the gym, um, I would explain different uh, aspects of the school, uh, different ways that we run our school, that type of thing, and then you would make your way up to classrooms where teachers would talk about their specific classrooms. This year, uh, I'm doing my part of orientation through this video uh, online. Uh, this will be posted to our Facebook page and our website, and it will be archived there. That way, if you have any questions, you can always go back and watch it again at a later date uh, to help answer those questions. And you will also be getting a video from your classroom teacher in the upcoming week. We will post those to our Facebook and website as well, uh, so you will be able to see the, the teacher's portion of that also. So to start and talk about orientation, when we do have our actual orientation here at school, what that's going to look like for us is it's going to happen in two waves. The first orientation is going to be for our traditional learners, students that will be coming on campus this fall. And traditional learner orientation is going to take place on Tuesday, August the 18th. And what we're asking is that any student whose last name begins with the letters A through K they can attend orientation from 12.30 to 2.30 that day. And any traditional learner whose last name in or begins with L through Z can attend orientation from 3 o'clock to 5 o'clock that day. Parents and students, we do ask when you come in for orientation that you wear your mask. And what will happen at this orientation is you will make your way straight to your classroom. You will go to your classroom, you'll get an opportunity to meet your teacher in person, you'll be able to turn in your registration forms, and you'll be able to pay your fees at that time. And parents, just so you know, for our traditional learners, there are two fees this year. The first is a $45 supply fee, and that will cover all student supplies for the entire school year. The second fee is a $30 technology fee which will cover the use of the iPad and being able to take the iPad home each week to do virtual assignments uh, the three days that the students are not here with us. Our second orientation is for our remote learners, and this will take place on Wednesday, August the 19th. This will happen in two waves. Uh, we will have a group for second grade or our second grade remote learners that will take place at 9 o'clock. And then we will have a group for third grade remote learners that will take place at 12 o'clock that day. And if you are a remote learner, uh, we ask when you come, we are going to meet in our gym that day. And we're going to do a quick tutorial with you of how to log in to the Schoology platform, how to see your remote assignments, um, what those look like in the Schoology platform, how do you complete those and submit those back to the teacher for grading purposes, those kind of uh, things. And then we will send you up to your homeroom teacher to pay your $30 technology fee and to pick up your iPad. So if you are a remote learner, the only fee you will pay at orientation will be the $30 technology fee if you need one of our iPads to take home to complete your, your remote uh, assignments on. Uh, we do ask that when you come in for remote orientation, parents and students, that you do please uh, wear a mask when you come in during the time that you are in our building. So, just to recap that, there are two orientations. There is one that will take place on Tuesday, August the 18th for traditional learners, and a second one that will take place on Wednesday, August the 19th for our remote learners. Now parents, as we get ready to start the school year, of course we do want to talk about safety. And I want you to understand that here at Memorial Park Elementary School and in all of our Jasper City Schools, safety is our first priority. We know that that comes before academics and we want you to know that we are working very hard on that. But parents, I do want to challenge you with the aspect 
that student safety begins at home. And you, as the parents, you are that first line of screening for COVID-19 symptoms or any other type of symptoms that a student may have. I encourage you each morning to get up, have breakfast with your student at home. Take time to speak with your student, talk with your student before they get on the bus, before you drop them off at school, uh, to look for items such as a fever, if your student's not feeling well in the morning, if they have that constant cough or runny nose, any of those types of symptoms, we need your help with being that first line of defense and checking for those things. When they get to school, we have measures in place as well to help with that. Um, we have staff members who will be taking temperatures of students as they come in. Uh, Jasper City Schools just recently purchased some infrared cameras that we will be using uh, to detect a, a, a student who may have an elevated temperature. Uh, we have put cleaning measures into practice. We've, we've bought uh, different types of cleaning uh, materials. We've bought fogging machines for our buildings. Our buildings will get a, a thorough deep cleaning every Wednesday and every Friday afternoon. We will be fogging our buildings. Uh, we will be doing all types of things to, uh, to keep our students safe. We have uh, removed tables and any unnecessary items from classrooms so that we have more room to spread students out to help those students be able to social distance. Um, we do have a mask policy in place where students will be required to wear a mask when they come into our school each day. They'll have to keep that mask on when they're on the bus. Uh, when they, if you're dropping them off in car line, when they get out of the car, they need that mask on. And they're going to keep that mask on until they make it to their classroom, until they're seated in their seat. And then there will be a few times throughout the day where the student may be able to t pull the mask, the mask down when it's an appropriate time. But anytime we're transitioning in hallways, uh, anytime that we're moving throughout the building, students will have those masks on. So a mask is a, it's a key piece of safety equipment, but it's also a key, uh, a key piece of equipment that a student needs every day. Just how at school a student needs paper and pencil every day, this year our students need masks every single day. So parents, we ask you to stay on top of that and make sure that they come to school uh, each day this year prepared with their mask. One of the big items that we typically talk about at school orientation is the car line procedures. And for time's sake, I, I don't want to spend a lot of time on this video going over that. I do encourage you to visit our website and visit our school Facebook page. We have posted this same picture that you see here with our car line procedures, and we have detailed step-by-step -step information for morning drop-off and for afternoon pickup on our website and Facebook page. But just know that our second grade students, they drop off in location A, which is on the natatorium side of the building, our third grade students pick up and drop off on location B, which is on the gym side of our building. That is between our gym and the ball fields that is next to the school. And then you see a location C that is right in front. That is for early morning drop off and that is for bus riders. Uh, so again, please visit our website and our Facebook page for detailed information on that. And uh, I'll spare you the time of going through that in this video. However, once you've read those, if you do have questions about that, that is something that uh, our classroom teachers will be able to address with you on orientation day. So know if you have questions that we will, we will get that answered for you those days. All right, the next thing that I want to talk about in this video is entering our building. And this is for parents and for students both. Um, we want you to know that anytime you enter one of our buildings that there will be temperature checks that will take place. Um, for our students on a regular school day, as they come, as our students exit the bus, as they get out of the car and enter into our building, we will have staff members that will be taking their temperatures. And we will, if a student has an elevated temperature, we will be contacting you to come back and pick your student up. Um, for students that check in, um, we sometimes have students that are tardy to school. Parents, I would encourage you, please, if your student is a traditional learner, please at all costs be on time this year. 
But if a student does have to check in late, parents, please know you cannot pull to the front door and just drop the student off. If it is after our 815 tardy bell, that student will need to be walked into the building by a parent. That way, a staff member in the front of our building can check that student's temperature before we send them down to the classroom. That is one of our screening protocols that we're going to follow this year. The other thing is for checkouts. Sometimes you have to come and check a student out from school. Parents, please know this is going to be a different year for that. Um, anytime you are coming to check out a student, please make sure that you bring a valid photo ID. A driver's license would be perfect for that so that our front office staff can verify who you are before we send the student with you. And when you come to check out, what we're going to do is we're going to ask you to ring the doorbell out front. When you come into our building, you're going to come in, we're going to check your ID, verify who you are, and then we're going to immediately send you parents back outside of our building. Once we call the student up front, we will then walk your student out to you. That way we have the most minimal amount of visitors in our building at one time as possible. And parents, we want you to know um, that's going to be a little bit more of a lengthy process for us than in years past. Um, it, it, that will not be a very quick process on the check-in, check-outs. So please know if you're going to check a student out, if, if your student has a doctor's appointment that they have to go to, and you know you're going to check them out at 2 o'clock, it would be a great thing at 1.30 that day to make a phone call to the front office and let our ladies in the front office know that you're going to be coming to check that student out, and that will help us to speed that process up. The next thing is medication. Uh, we have several students at school that have to take daily medications, and uh, parents, you know that those have to be brought in. You have to meet with our nurse. Our nurse has to count those out with you in her presence. And in years past, we allowed parents to just come to the building, come and meet with our nurse. Well, this is going to be a very different year for our school nurses. Our school nurses are going to be uh, wide open all day long. So parents, if you have medication that needs to be brought to the school, we're going to ask you to call the school and set up an appointment with our nurse where our nurse uh, knows that she has a built-in time in her schedule to meet with you that day, to count those out, to fill out that necessary paperwork. So know if you have medication, please plan ahead on that. Uh, don't wait to the last minute to try to rush it up to the school, okay? The next thing on our list is just talking about visitors to our building. Um, as I've mentioned earlier, a parent is going to be able to come into the front office to check in or check out a student and to bring medication, and, and really that's it as far as visitors. Uh, parents, we will not be able to go any further in the building uh, once the school year gets started. Uh, we will have no visitors that come to eat lunch with students. Um, we won't be able to bring special snacks to the building, those kind of things. So just know that that is our, our policy on visitors. We won't be making classroom visits or anything like that this year. Um, again, this is a very different year, and we want to keep all of our students and staff as safe as we possibly can. And again, parents, I, I want to reiterate, anytime you're coming to check in, check out a student, bring medication, those kind of things, a mask will always be required this year for entrance into our building. Uh, the next thing I want to address is the issue of attendance. Uh, every year at orientation, we talk about the importance of attendance, and this year will be more important than ever. Uh, with this first nine weeks with our traditional students only attending in-person instruction for two days, those two days are critical this year, parents. Um, our, stu our teachers are ready. Our teachers are planning and getting lessons ready to deliver, but our teachers will be delivering uh, a, a vast amount of content on those two days that students are in school, and it is very important that your student, if they are a traditional learner, that they are here both of those days that they're assigned to be at school. For our remote learners, please know that daily attendance will be required of you. It will just be in an online fashion. Students, you'll be required to daily log on to the Schoology platform to see your assignments, to complete your assignments, and 
for our remote learners, when you guys come for orientation, we have a kind of a mock schedule that we're going to give you that day. Parents, I would encourage you, if your student is a remote learner, to keep your student on a daily schedule very similar to what we would follow here at the school. And we'll provide you with that schedule at uh, the remote orientation. But parents, I would, I would highly encourage you to make sure that if your student's a remote learner, they stay in a routine each day of completing reading assignments at a certain time, math assignments, science, social studies, whatever the case may be, that they kind of follow the same schedule that the school follows just to keep your student in that mode of doing school. So if they do decide to come back and be a traditional learner at the end of the nine weeks, they're already in that mode of uh, following the school schedule. I want to talk about breakfast and lunch. This is an issue that we've had some questions about, so I do want to address those. Both breakfast and lunch here at our school will be served in a grab-and-go type fashion. When students come in in the morning, if they plan to eat breakfast, they'll come through our breakfast line and pick up a, uh, a grab-and-go type breakfast, and they'll take it to their classroom. They'll actually eat it in their classroom at the beginning of the school day. And uh, we're going to have a set time each morning where students eat their breakfast, and then we're going to cut that off because we do not want to lose instructional time there. So if your student needs to eat breakfast here at school, please make sure they're here on time so they can get their breakfast, get to their classroom, and eat it. Um, and we can get instruction started in the classroom. Uh, same will go for lunch. Uh, lunch will be a grab-and-go type fashion, and students will eat that in their classroom as well. Um, we hope as the school year goes on and uh, we learn more about this virus and we have more safety protocols in place, we hope we will eventually be able to get back to eating breakfast and lunch in the lunchroom. But as for now, those will, be, uh, those will take place in our classrooms. Parents, again, I want to reiterate that we will have no visitors for lunch. I know typically in years past, we welcome parents in to come and eat lunch with their students. Our students really look forward to that. But this year, we will have no visitors who will be coming in and eating lunch with students. Um, another issue, a lot of times we have students who forget their lunchbox at home. Parents, if that happens this year, please do not bring that up to the school. Um, we're not going to be taking lunches in um, if a student forgets their lunch, if a student forgets a backpack at home, those kind of things. No worries. Keep it at home. They can bring it tomorrow. Um, if your student forgets their lunchbox, we will let them eat in the lunchroom that day. Uh, so just know that. Know that we are not going to bring any lunchboxes or any backpacks, anything that may be forgotten at home. It needs to stay at home and it can come the next day to school. Um, another thing, a lot of times we have parents that will bring a special snack on a student's birthday for the classroom, those kind of things. This year, parents, we will not be able to do that. And uh, I hate that. I know our students look forward to that. And uh, our teachers will celebrate birthdays, those kind of things in the room. They'll, they'll make it special for our students. But we will not have any outside food or, or drinks that are brought in for the classroom this year. Uh, that leads us to the, to the issue of water bottles. As you know, uh, due to COVID-19, our water fountains in our buildings are turned off. Uh, so that will, our, our students will not be able to access those water fountains. So we do encourage you that we would like for each student to bring a water bottle with them to school each day. Uh, they need to bring that filled and with their name on it. Uh, with the amount of water bottles that we'll have in our building, it'll be important that a student's name is on it so that those don't get lost or swapped around. But please know that students should bring a field water bottle to school each day of school this year. Um, one of the things that we typically address at orientation is the issue of dress code and backpacks. Um, a few years ago, Jasper City Schools adopted a new policy regarding uh, book bags, and uh, you can see that on page 43 of our handbook. When you, when you get our handbook at student orientation, you'll be able to see that. But our policy on book bags is that they have to be clear or mesh. It, it has to be see-through so we can tell what's inside of that book bag. 
Also, the issue of dress code. Uh, we typically spend a long time on this at orientation, and I'm not going to do that today. Uh, when you pick up your handbook, please visit page 29 in your handbook. It specifically spells out the elementary dress code, and uh, this year we add masks to that. Uh, please know that our student masks need to follow the dress code policy as far as images or designs that are on clothing. Uh, masks will follow that same policy that we have for different images or logos that may be on shirts, pants, that kind of thing. So uh, take a look at that, and if you have any questions about that, I'll be glad to address that with you on an individual basis. A big thing for us this year, parents, is we need current student information and emergency contacts. When you attend orientation, you will fill out a registration packet and in that registration packet, there'll be a small white card that we keep emergency contact information on. We keep parent phone numbers, addresses, those kind of things. Parents throughout the year, one of the battles that we fight is phone numbers will change. A parent moves and an address changes, and those do not get updated at the school. It is going to be crucial that you keep your student information updated. Anytime there's a change to your phone number, anytime there's a change to your address, if you will just simply call the front office here at the school, we will make those changes in our computer system. But that will be vital because if a student is sick this year, we must be able to get in contact with you or someone on their emergency contact list to be able to come and pick the student up. I would encourage you to have more than one contact number for each student. Please list friends and family who you are comfortable with coming to pick your student up if we needed that and we couldn't get in touch with you. Um, again, we've already talked about orientation dates and times. Um, that's back at the beginning of this video, so you can reference back to that. That is also posted to our website and Facebook page. So uh, if you have questions about which day you come, please see uh, our website and Facebook page and all that spelled out for it. We've talked about fees at orientation. Again, just to recap that, our traditional learners will pay a $45 supply fee along with a $30 technology fee. Our remote learners will only pay the $30 technology fee at this time. I also want to let you know that when you attend orientation, our lunchroom staff will be, on, will be here and they'll be ready if you want to put money on your student's lunch account. You can do that that day as well. Um, the only other thing I would mention about orientation is the day that you come, our traditional learners. When you come and you meet your teacher, you turn in your paperwork, pay your fees, that thing, please let your student's teacher know how that student will get home each day, if they'll be a bus rider or if they'll be a car rider. That is very important to us to make sure that we get students on the correct bus and we get, we get students home in the correct manner. And that helps us out tremendously in the first week of school to know that ahead of time. So please communicate that with your child's teacher at orientation. Parents, the last thing I, I, I want to address with you is I want you to know that at Memorial Park Elementary and in all Jasper City schools, we're prepared and we're ready to see your students. We're excited to see your kids. Um, the last day students attended in person in Jasper City School was on March the 13th. That was a long time ago, and we are excited to see them. Uh, there's been a tremendous amount of work done in our building to get prepared. Our teachers are working every single day to prepare engaging lessons, and they cannot wait to see your kids. Um, the last thing I want to cover, parents, every year at orientation, I talk about some of my beliefs as the principal of this school. And those still hold true, even in this situation with COVID-19. And I want to address a couple of those with you. The first one is that at Memorial Park Elementary, we have very high expectations for our students, our faculty, our parents, and our community. I want you to know that even though students may be working remotely, even though students may be only in person two days a week, we still have high expectations for them. We're going to push them. We're going to give them as the best educational opportunities possible. For our faculty, our faculty 
uh, does a variety of trainings every year. Our faculty is one of the hardest working faculties I've, I've ever been a part of. And I want you to know that we have high expectations for our faculty. We hold our, our faculty to those expectations because when we do that, that helps our students become, uh, become better and have a better educational opportunity. Parents, the expectations for parents this year will be higher than they've ever been. Parents, we encourage you to be involved in your students' education. We encourage you to seek out our teachers, myself, ask us questions. We want to help you. We are here for you. So seek us out. It's going to take dedication from our parents. For our remote learners, stay on that schedule. For our traditional learners, parents, check those backpacks every night to see if there's communication from teachers. Please be involved with those students on those three days that they're at home completing these virtual assignments and know what your students are doing. And for our community, our community in Jasper has always supported the school system and we need that now more than ever. We need your support in our community. And the last thing that I want to talk about, parents, I want you to know that as a school, we know that every single student is different and every single student is important. And I want you to know that. We love your students, and we know that your students are important to you, and they're important to us. And parents, we know that students are different. All students do not learn in the same way. That's why our teachers are highly trained. Our staff is trained on a variety of different teaching techniques. And we're going to do everything in our power to make sure that your student learns in the best way possible. So parents, again, I want to reiterate, we're ready. We're prepared. We cannot wait to see your students. Parents, please know that our teachers will be sending out orientation videos in the upcoming week. I encourage you to go back and watch this video again if you have questions. When our teachers send out videos, watch theirs. And then any questions that you may have about our school or the classroom, when you attend that orientation, either on August the 18th or August the 19th, if you'll have those questions ready with you, we'll be ready and prepared to uh, answer those to the best of our, our ability. Parents and students, we want you to know that we love you and we cannot wait to see you. Have a great day.